everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today it's going to be really different. I am not a camera review guy. I do not do reviews of a multitude of products in the camera world. It's not what this channel is about. However, I have been asked what we use uh, to shoot these vlogs with. In fact, we were down in Atlanta over the Christmas holiday. I was out shooting and there was a gentleman, he asked me, he said, is that a good camera for vlogging? And of course the answer is yes. So today I'm going to give you a rundown of why I think the Sony a6600 is one of the best vlogging cameras on the market today. So let's get started. So for the first time in any video I've ever done, uh, I'm actually using notes. So this is Sony's flagship APS-C size censored mirrorless camera the Sony a6600. It replaced the Sony a6500. My very first foray, if you will, into the mirrorless interchangeable lens camera world was a Sony a6000. Now let me get that camera for you real quick. Okay, now don't be alarmed by the plastic bag covering this camera. Let me take it out of its bag. This was my very first camera. This revolutionized the camera world when it was introduced. I don't know, 2014, 2012. I don't know when it was introduced, but I bought it later on and I got it at Best Buy on a deal, let me tell you. The reason I'm bringing this up today in part is because I want to compare it with the A6600 and explain to you why this is so much better. When you are handling both of these cameras, you realize real quickly that one feels like a cheap toy compared to one that feels like a professional's camera. The body construction of this is a magnesium alloy or what have you. Uh, very tough, very professional looking. It's got a flat matte black finish uh, that I think looks fantastic. Also, the buttons here are the newer version of Sony's button system that they're putting on all of their cameras now, all of their new releases, and they have more of a, a positive feel to them. They're thicker, they give you a more confident response. But most importantly, on this particular camera, and let me take my microphone off real quick. The most important benefit to this particular camera, as far as the exterior, is the grip. It's got a beautiful grip. And part of the reason why it's got such a great grip is because it's got the bigger batteries. And let me tell you, these little guys pack a powerful punch. They last forever. And when I upgraded from these old traditional, what is it, FP50 uh, batteries or whatever they are, to this, I mean, noticeable upgrade. So if you are familiar with Sony a6000 and you're looking to up your game, currently in the market right now, the Sony a6600 is the top of the line Sony APS-C mirrorless camera and you can't get any better than this in this particular segment. If you are an aspiring YouTuber, uh, an aspiring photographer, someone that is looking to make a little bit of an investment and you're thinking about the Sony A6600, I wanna to try to answer some questions for you and maybe dispel some fears for you. think is so fascinating is Sony recently released a camera they call the a7SC and that's a full frame camera in this particular body or something very similar to this particular body and then about I don't know six months later or less than that they came out with a cinema line camera and it's called the Sony FX3 and granted it's a little wider body than this one I haven't compared them obviously in person but it appears to be a little wider in body and obviously buttons are different and that's a that's a video first camera i'm not trying to make some point that this is equal to that no i'm just simply saying that sony has decided that this sort of profile and this style is 
I, I don't know if it's their wave of the future. Let's face it, people are proud of their cameras. They want to show off their cameras, and when they show up to do some work or something, they don't want to be embarrassed. I don't think you're going to be embarrassed by this particular body, okay? On that note, I was in, again, in Atlanta. I was shooting some video for a vlog, and a lady walked up to me that was, I guess, uh, like a manager of that particular shopping center. And she was like, we do not allow professional photography here. And I explained to her that that's not what I was doing. She was convinced that I was producing some professional photography with this particular setup that you're looking at right here. I'm saying that because this gives an impression that you are serious. So that's the first thing. The appearance gives you a professional look, okay? And one of the things that I want to note here is a flip LCD screen. Now, I know that Sony, they have produced a flip-out LCD screen, and that's probably better, but the Sony a6600 does have you covered when it comes to flipping forward. So you can use this as a vlog camera and frame yourself in the shot very easily. Now, they do have a hot shoe here. If you mount one of your external microphones here, then obviously you're covering the screen, right? So Small Rig has got you covered there. They have produced a small metal adapter that goes into the hot shoe here and comes around. And this is how I actually do my vlogging. So this is my vlog setup. So I use a Rode Video Micro. And by the way, all of this, it's going to be in a link down in the description. And you can check it all out on Amazon. If you do decide to purchase, it's no extra cost to you, but it does uh, relay back to our channel and help us out. So if you want to help us out, that's how you can do it and it's no extra cost to you. I love the dead cat on here, which is what you're what you're seeing here, this huge, you know, uh, fluffy thing. <laughs> it's actually covering the microphone. When you get near a microphone and you blow into it, it's gonna make all kinds of horrible noise. This helps to solve that issue. So when you're outside and it's blowing wind profusely, I always leave this on. Uh, you can keep this on and uh, that'll help your audio tremendously. And that's, that is my vlog setup here as far as the camera body and the mic. If you're doing a lot of research on this camera, you know that it has the beefed up battery. You know it's got the better grip. Uh, you know it's got the magnesium alloy body. You know that it's got a flip LCD screen. And you also know that it has inside a 5-axis in-body image stabilization sensor. That is a huge upgrade, let me tell you. And to go along with that and to match that, this is a Sony G lens, not a G Master, just a Sony G lens. It's a F4 18-105G. Maybe Sony could come out with a version 2 of this. I think it could be updated. But if you're going to buy an all-around camera lens, if you want to upgrade from your kit lens, that kit lens is what you see right here, one of the options is the Sony G, the 18-105 to f4. Three major positives, I believe, to this particular lens. One is it does have a power zoom. You know, it's a 105 millimeter. Sony APS-C is a one and a half crop. So when you do the math on that, you're at 157.5 millimeters. So that's quite an extension. When you're running and gunning, you're doing fast videography work for a vlog. The last thing that you want to do is sit around changing lenses when you're out in the field. So you almost want to have a grab-and-go scenario where you just grab your camera, it's got its lens attached, and you're just going. No fuss, no confusion, just getting it done. This is an all-around dream of a lens to use because it, it'll reach way out there, but it also comes into 18 millimeters. So the equivalent in the full-frame world is a 27 millimeter. And you can vlog handheld with this particular camera and lens set up just like this. I've done it a lot, okay? Okay, this behind me feels like I'm lost on an island all alone, like completely untouched by humanity. And it just really has this really neat island vibe to it. It's really cool. Like, I'm gonna go start a fire and start building a hut. Y'all, you've got to come to Jekyll Island. Oh my yes, goodness, I mean. This is like the best beach I've ever been to. Best island, I think. I haven't been to too it's, many islands, but this is really like amazing. out of the park. Yeah. The third thing about this lens is that it actually has optical steady shot. So what you're doing is you're combining the K2 
camera body that has image stabilization with a lens that has image stabilization. I'm not suggesting that it looks as good as a gimbal, but it does give you uh, more flexibility and it makes your footage look more smooth. You know, <laughs> that's what you have it for. And if you're steady and patient, you can really get some beautiful footage and you don't have those trimmers. This particular camera is a perfect, perfect travel camera because it's not too heavy. Now, it's not as light as my Sony a6000, but again, when you pick this up after picking this up, this feels like a cheap little toy and this feels like a professional's tool. And so it has enough weight to keep maybe some of the small trimmers out, but it's light enough that you can just take it with you and travel all over the world if you so desire. Now let's talk about price and let's talk about this particular camera in comparison to say a Sony FX3. Brand new camera just came out, just released. I'm not suggesting at all. Please don't misunderstand me in the comments. Um, I could get slammed for this and I'm telling you I don't believe this. I'm not trying to compare this to the Sony a7S III or the Sony FX3. I don't believe they're even in the same category. If you are financially able, your workload and your workflow and your professional status demands that you go all the way up to the Sony FX3 or the Sony a7S III for vlogging or something of that sort, go for it. I'm talking to somebody that is, you know, they're ready to upgrade, but they're not ready to bite the bullet and spend thirty-five to $4,000 on a camera body. This particular Sony a6600, when I purchased it brand new, was $1,400. Now, that may sound like a lot, but when you compare $1,400 with $3,500, you and I both agree that's a substantial reduction in cost. And more importantly than what you spent is what you're producing. I know that the moment you step into the world of photography, the first thing you're going to do is get an interchangeable lensed camera. A camera that you can swap out lenses, right? Put another lens on it, get you a different look. Let me talk to you a little bit about the lenses that I purchased. This is a 55 to 210. It's just kind of like the second kit lens. Uh, it's actually not a bad lens. Uh, maybe it's completely overlooked and missed in the world, uh, but this is actually not a bad lens, guys. I still like it. I'm still keeping it, okay? It reaches way out there, 210. If you multiply 210 times 1.5, let's do that. You know, that's gonna extend you out to 315 millimeters, the full frame equivalent, right? And this lens is so cheap. I'm talking $250 or something. It's, it's cheap. The lens that I'm using to shoot this video on right now is a Sigma 16mm 1.4. I have in my hand the Sigma 30mm 1.4. The one that I'm using, I'm actually using my wife's camera to video this by the way everybody. And she has a Sony 5100, alright? Uh, very, very small, cheap, very usable camera. And I'm actually using that with a Sigma lens I was telling you about. What a neat little setup. She loves her camera. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Sigma lenses. So the 16 millimeter and the 30 millimeter. So this particular lens here is my photographer's lens. Okay. This is the lens that I use to take all of my photos, family photos, individual photos, you name it. My wife and I were announcing that our second child was on the way. I actually, because again, I'm out in the field and I don't feel like changing lenses and my first priority was to try to take the photo, not take video, but I'm there and I'm like, okay, let's, let's switch it. Let's do some video work. I just use this, slow mode it. Look at this footage, y'all. It is absolutely gorgeous footage. In the world of professional videography, a lot of them use prime lenses. You look at this footage and tell me if uh, you can make out the difference between this 
and say a $5,000 setup. I dare say on YouTube, for example, you're not going to be able to tell the difference unless you were to put them side by side. And that's the whole point. Along with all of its video capabilities, yes, you can go in and change the picture profile. I don't do that. You can shoot 4K. I don't even shoot 4K. I shoot 1080p. Even for a professional, I feel like this would be an outstanding B camera. Say you're in a place where you're worried somebody would likely steal it, take it from you, and there goes five, six, eight thousand dollars. This is a much cheaper camera to replace. Also, it's dual purpose. As I've showed you, it takes absolutely beautiful video, but it also takes beautiful photos. And it is a, you know, it's a photo first camera with a heavy emphasis on its video capability. And that's why I feel like if you're going to buy one camera, you're in the market for a camera that, you know, you want to get above the, the bottom of the pack, but you're not really crazy to go into that three to five to eight thousand dollars once you buy your camera body and your lenses and so forth. This is a great option for you. And even if you have that kind of camera, the very expensive type, and you want to do a B camera, this might be a good option for you. I think this camera, when it was released, was overlooked. People were looking for something else, maybe like a, a Sony a7000, something with a few more features and so forth. But this is the direction that Sony was going in, and people didn't realize it at the time. As I told you, they've made that full-frame a7SC that looks similar to this. And they've also made the Sony FX3 that looks similar to this. At least give it a test run, put it in your hands. One of the very first things that I noticed when I pulled this out of the box about a year ago when I bought it was the handle. It was just just perfect in the hand and I've used this extensively since that time and the beautiful video the beautiful photo the fact that on YouTube you probably wouldn't see the difference in the video uh, unless I showed it to you side by side Sony has recently come out with two new lenses one is a telephoto lens and one is a 16 to 55 or 16 to 50 uh, G lens uh, both of those I would love to own both of those lenses but I've never used them so obviously I'm not going to talk about them here, but I think those are a great option if you're looking to, you know, put a, a 16 millimeter on the, on the face of this beautiful body. From all the tests that I've seen, you know, it's going to produce a sharper image than this particular lens, which again goes back to the point where I think Sony could take this lens and bring out a version 2 that's sharper, okay? Even the telephoto lens would be a great option. You could basically get away with one body, two lenses, done. If you're into photography as well and you want that extra bit of low light capability and that extra bit of bokeh that looks so beautiful and so blurry and you want to be able to surprise and produce something that looks more full frame like for these Sigma F 1.4 lenses are a beautiful option. The price is reasonable, extremely reasonable. The quality out of these lenses is second to none. That's the kit that I'm using in all of our blogs, along with my wife's Sony A5100 that I've already mentioned. And uh, she uses her kit lens. We run it on auto, and I'm telling you, it produces some beautiful images as well. All right, everybody, again, if you'd like to help the channel out, links in the description. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you wanna see us more, you can subscribe. That's your choice, of course. Hopefully, though, you enjoyed this video. Very different from my normal routine of things. So I'm gonna sign off, take care guys.